Jason, nice good to see you. Um, we're here today after the uh, postponement, the late postponement yeah. against Harrogate Town. And what were your initial thoughts on on, on today? Well, disappointed. You know, we um, a have got friends that have come from around the country to be. I promised them a home win to get them to come today. So it's um, you know the club wanted the game off yesterday. We looked at the pitch, we knew the weather forecast, and we spoke to the um, the regulatory bodies and said, look, we'd, we'd like to call it. And the ref wouldn't come until 11 o'clock this morning, which is right. So you know, in their defence, they want the games to play, so we haven't got a backlog. But it should have been called at 11. You know, the, the reality is we know the pitch. Everyone that knows Blundell Park knows that this stand doesn't get a lot of sunshine at the best of times. So, yeah, it's disappointing, but it is what it is, right? The, and, and look, for people that think that there's any sort of upside for us calling games we want games to be played we want a reaction to last week first and foremost but it costs us real money there's 10 20 but probably actually probably about 15 grand's worth of cost for us that are some cost today um but look as an optimist the pitch will get a bit more rest and the players are off training now so they'll always be tuesday night hopefully if the weather doesn't get us again but um, no no really disappointed everyone wants Saturday afternoon to be about football right so I'm no different to that is there a concern about the pitch long term here? um look similarly look we've spent a bit of money on it last year it looked like absolutely beautiful at the beginning of the season right I think it was a massive improvement from where it had been before but there's no getting away from the weather we've had recently so there's two things we one thing we can control which is we'll keep doing remedial work that we can the team are on it the the ground staff have been excellent trying to you know we've, we've dug out the the goal mouse and we've tried to do the work on this side of the pitch but there's a reality it's a hundred year old pitch and it'll cost it cost a million quid to replace it right and if we've got a million quid to spend we'll probably be spending it on the squad right so we need to well we haven't got it by the way just so people are aware so um so we'll keep investing the amounts we can to improve it and then at some point it's a long-term conversation about london park it's not there yet we've said it again and again we're not moving from in the near time there's other decisions to be made about improving this club but i think there will be just at some point um, and we're trying to do a longer term strategy at the moment which will really define the investment required to take the club on um and that would that need other investors and part of that would be you know could we raise money to do something more substantive with the pitches but at the moment We'll commit to improving it, we're spending money on it, but the reality is we can't control the weather. My home, my garden at home is absolutely waterlogged at the moment. You know, we, you have to look outside to know what we're dealing with, but you know, at the same time, we want to keep improving it. But um, yeah, we're, we're somewhat restricted by you know, a hundred year old pitch as well. Um, we've just had the EFL week of action, Jason, um, where the, the club has been out in the community. I know Paul and Chris went to a school. Um, the events, it shows that the events off the pitch are just as important as the ones on it, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, you see Chris's face doing the coaching, <laughs> pretty intense for those kids, wasn't it? I was, like, I was a bit worried, like, it obviously didn't go light on them, which is great. No, but joking aside, it's great, it's great, you know, this is what the club can be about, is, you know, and it's, it's, it predates us, right? It's like this club has always been represented players in the community and, and charity, great work. Um, and people know it's important to us, so great to see it happening, great to see the EFL trying to re-emphasise the opportunity for clubs to play a part in towns and importantly there's plenty more we can be doing and we will be doing so no, it's great to see the stuff that's going on and, and the EFL talking about it. Is that something that's changed from being in National League as well? Because I'm not sure, if, is that something the National League would have done? No, no, I mean they do a bit in fairness to them but like anything, um, be careful what I say, there's room for improvement in many areas of the National League's uh, professionalism and governance I would suggest. Um, but the AFL, it's definitely core to what the AFL is about, which we love, and there's some good people at the AFL. And this matters to them, so the governance and the regulation of the football is important, but they recognise, as you've seen by the report a couple of weeks ago, that football's more than what happens on a Saturday afternoon, and so having people emphasising their strategy is brilliant. Uh, the club has reached the fourth round of the FA Cup for the first time since 2000, which is an incredible achievement. Yeah. What does it mean for, for you and the club and, and for yourself as a fan, Jason? Well, I'm just, just delighted. You know, if you look at lo small markers of progress for the club and we're looking for them everywhere, you know, we're trying to continually improve what we're doing. I think that's no small achievement, right? To beat three good, well, at least a couple of good Division One sides, uh, one not, maybe not as good, but um, but like it's just brilliant to be in that hat. And whoever we play, right, it'll be a good day out. You know, we've got a chance. We've always got a chance against. You know, there's no denying that Luton are a good team going in the right direction for them, a really well-run club. But you've got a chance on the day, haven't you? So as a supporter, it's really exciting. 
and then financially you know it's important to the club it's like it just takes a bit of pressure off it means that you know when we're looking at this month you know money that Andrew and I are going to have to put in potentially is slightly less if we get a result and so you know there's one little part of my brain that's activated different like it was a weird against Burton I don't get nervous watching games but like the last 12 minutes I was thinking God, if we if we if we if someone scores, that's been another hundred grand, right? So it was like it was real. So I was like, I had a bit of tension for the first time, and I was like, well, that's interesting. I haven't experienced that before. That it's real money within a finite amount of time. So, you know, it's important for the town first and foremost. It's a great marker of the progress the club's making to be in this round again. And then there's no getting away from the great financial upside as well. So, you know, on the whole, it's just it's just thrilling, isn't it? It's not, there's not much more exciting than being in the hat. And being there, you know, in the FA Cup, and thinking that, you know, there could be more to go as well. So it's exciting. And what's it like watching the draw as well as chairman? Because it's exciting watching it as a fan. Yeah. But as you know, as a chairman, it must be, you know, if you get Manchester United away, it, it, the potential is there. It was, it was really so. So I always, I, I think a lot in life about enjoying moments when they're happening. So what we did was we invited our um, our extended family. My wife's mum's a scouser, and my father-in-law's is from Manchester. So it was just interesting. We had Sunday dinner, and we had them round, and. My, my wife's mum was talking about Jurgen Klopp, and I said, "Well, I can introduce you to Paul Hurst as well if you come to the game that day. That could happen." So, that's the thing. That's part of the process, right? Is enjoying the moment when anything's possible. That's the time for real joy. The future could go anyway, and so I really enjoyed it. And you know, irrespective of who comes out of the hat, the moment when you're thinking about the anticipation is part of the process. If you don't include that, you you decrease your own happiness. I think so. It was it was, it was thrilling. It was it was great, and. Um, there's no one in my family who's a Luton fan, so there was no one to be either happy or disappointed. But it was a lovely morning thinking about Liverpool and the chance to get my, um, my mother-in-law introduced to Jurgen Klopp. <laughs> um, the club's a member of the uh, the Fair Game Initiative, um, and when you look at events up the A180, it's quite a sad events, really. What's happening at Scunthorpe oh. United? Um, it makes it more important than ever, and I know it's something you're passionate about, mm -hmm. Jason. Is is the need for an independent regulator in, in football? Yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd look, I was asked on, on, on the radio earlier about what's going on at Scunny. Towns like Scunny, towns like Grimsby and the hundreds of other ones look like us, particularly in the north of England. You need a football club, you need a football club that represents you as a town, that has a sense of optimism where you can come together on Saturday afternoon. So, you know, it, it, it's a real travesty what's happening there. And I, I won't make comments either side. You also don't know what's going on behind the scenes, you know, for, for the football club itself. But it doesn't look great. And, and most of all, you know, irrespective of who owns a club, you know, the fans are the real owners long term of the, the memory of the energy of a town, of the, you know, the identity of a football club. And, and, and the football clubs very rarely go out of existence. I think we've seen in the last 50 years, you know, hundreds of clubs have suffered either points deduction or administration. But, but what happens is, is that football clubs get relegated or they have to Phoenix like, like Stockport. And it can be a generation that have a team where they don't see six and a half thousand people on a Saturday afternoon or facilities invested in that. So, you know, I worry for football generally, and this is the regulators part of that, is making sure that, that, that there's a right flow of finance. And the flow of finance has twofold um, importance. One is that it makes the game sustainable in of itself. But importantly, if you don't have to be at the risk of benefactors having to put money in or out, then you can get different types of investors. Fans could own clubs then. And I'm particularly passionate about the idea that if you could find a way that the financial risk was was limited, then you could have fan ownership of more clubs. And that's where, where clubs should be, actually, I think, in the long run. So I think it's, um, yes, Scunny is a good example, but there, 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 there'll be another half a dozen clubs up and down the country that are teetering on the edge of that at the moment, particularly with the cost of living crisis. So you know, for me, a regulator, I'm not massively pro-regulation for its sake, but I think in protecting, you know, the, the the sport that is so important to our country, our culture, then there's a lot of ways we can improve and the regulators a big way of doing that. And rivalries aside as well, you know, we need clubs like Scunthorpe. Oh, United, totally. Don't we? Right. Like, so, you know, it's, it's like it's like moaning on a Saturday when the result doesn't go our way. It doesn't mean you don't love town if you have a moan about a result. Right. We all do it. We all have the right to be disappointed. And just because we're down the road from Scunny and there are rivals. It, it's all fun, it's all sport. You don't have rivalry without rivals, right? So you've got to have... But, like, genuinely, I think... You know, I've spoken to a few people that are involved with them, and I'd like... We'll help them. You know, we'll, we will help in whatever way we can for the new owner that comes in, because, you know, for me, it's more about town's need football clubs 
and you know whilst when we play them we want absolutely look we want Scunny to do well just not as well as us right that's the reality as long as we're doing better then we'd be happy but you know I, I'm, I'm hoping that comes to a, a conclusion quickly which there's rumours that it's it could do so I'm hoping that 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 is positive in the next week or so and finally Jason what are your thoughts on the season so far um like I want us to be doing better and Paul's the same so like we, we We've got to remember where we've come from in the last 19 months. You know, when, when we came into the club and you know we were facing down the barrel of National League football for God knows how many years, right? We're back, but we're not complacent. We want, But we want to keep improving. So if you said at the beginning of the season, mid-table, this round of the FA Cup, you know, that looks like progress to me, but there's still you know, a number of games to go. I think we can improve. We're trying to improve the squad. Paul's ambitious. We're ambitious. We want to get out of this league. So... Um, it's okay, but I've, I've done nothing in my life to be just okay. I'm ambitious in everything that I've done, so I think we can still improve. When I look at what Paul's trying to do, when I look at what I'm trying to do as a club, we can see the areas we can get better. And as long as we can see them and we can enact them, then we'll be good. So so we're doing all right. End of the season, we can um, have a proper assessment of the, the where we are. But there's a long way to go yet, and I think we can improve still. So I'm hoping that that's um, we're, we're definitely be higher than where we are coming to season end. Should just mention Jason as well. We've got the fans forum Thursday yeah. and the 9th of February here in, in at Blundell Park, yeah. and that's a good opportunity for, for fans to put any questions to yourselves. Yeah, look, 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 we want we want the critique, we want the questions, we want the debate. We won't always have the right answers, or people might always agree with us, but they'll get an honest answer from us, and and we're looking for input. And you know, I much prefer conversation in face rather than through a keyboard. I know that's part of life these days, um, but at the same time, you know. Let's have a good conversation about and talk about where we are. We'll we'll be honest and direct about you know what we're trying to do and there's some constraints on that as well. You only have to look at Lincoln losing two million quid a season. We're not going to do that. It does you know whilst they've got those great owners I and mean, they are good owners, if the music stops and they decide they're not interested again, you know a club saddled with debt and a run rate on their opex is not a good sell right. So we're going to do this the right way. We're going to invest. We're going to do it over time, but. Yeah, let's have that conversation in person on that Thursday. It'd be great to get as many people down and have that conversation one-to-one. -one. Cheers, Jason. Thank Thanks you. a lot.